A drag Kimi Antonelli finally got an FP1 run out at Monza, his home Grand Prix in George Russell's Mercedes and crashed. I could sense we all took a combined wince almost when it happened. So much expectation, so much pressure, three rows deep of photographers at the Mercedes garage and he shunts. Is this a sign of things to come? Should we be worried or is this just part of the course? My name's Tomo, let's talk about it. Look, first and foremost, okay, Parabolica is an absolute bastard, okay? That corner has caught out many a driver in its time and will continue to do so. In fact, it caught out Bernd Maylander, the safety car driver, literally yesterday in the safety car, in the Aston Martin, put it in the wall. I still don't know exactly why, the brakes overheated perhaps, and I know there's been some changes to the track, but I don't think that causes that incident. At the end of the day, it happened. In that FP1 session, we also had Franco Colapinto almost come a miss right at the end of FP1 in his Williams. Of course, he's only just jumped into that car as well. But even Carlos Sainz had a bit of a moment there as well. I mean, rewind the clock back to 2020, and Charles Leclerc in his Ferrari had a famously massive shunt at Parabolica. This is such a difficult corner because you know every single fraction of time you lose on the exit, you exponentially get punished for it down the start finish straight, right? Anytime you're not on the throttle, you compromise your exit and the end of your lap as well as the start of the next lap as well. Parabolica exit is one of the most important turns to get right, especially in qualifying. Then you bear in mind these are low drag setup cars around Monza, but also ground effect cars. So any slight little break in in the underfloor aero can really destabilize the platform. We know these cars are tricky and skittish. Kimi went straight out, went full send as well, early doors and paid the price. That did seem like a questionable call from Mercedes to literally go full send soft tires immediately i would love to play you a clip of his lap up to that point but fom will come for me i'll put a link to a tweet in the description down below so you can watch it back he is going absolutely ham and up until that point it looked pretty clean to be honest yet he ends up in the wall there's many a theory as to why mercedes opted to do it this way are they trying to get a headline time out of him before then announcing him as george russell's teammate for next season i don't know that seems a bit weird and a bit unnecessary even more pressure you're putting on the kid mercedes by design have given andrea kimi antonelli this opportunity at monza probably in part because monza is a relatively easy track to get on top of as an f1 driver especially from a physicality point of view but of course he's italian and is the most exciting driver from italy we've had in formula one for a very long time considering italy's pedigree in motorsport the lack of absolutely quality italian talent i'm thinking what we had giovanazzi we've had Jano trulli we've had giancarlo fisichella there's not many more who come to mind you got to go back to the ascari days i mean there is a famous quote from a certain formula one driver right diamonds are formed under pressure from Lance Stroll, of all people, you might have thought, maybe not Lance, but there you go. What about Alan Shearer? Pressure is for tyres. Well, of course, this is Formula One and the Pirellis are out in force. You throw a young driver with crazy potential and crazy upside, which Andrea Kimi Antonelli clearly does have. It's sink or swim. You look at how Max Verstappen took his opportunity way back in, what, 2014 in Suzuka, didn't he? Make his debut that weekend with Yoshio Bianchi. That was the first time we ever saw him in a Formula One car. And also Max is a good reference because early on in his career, he had a lot of crashes, many an incident. I remember Mattia Bonato talking about this. Better to have a driver that is occasionally guilty of stepping over 100%, but can get to 100% and can hang there and has that talent and that ability to extract 100% from the car underneath them. Even if they're a bit shunty, than someone who can't get to that level, even if they don't crash, right? And you look at someone like Logan Sargent, of course, who was replaced, and maybe those crashes would have been forgiven if he'd have been knocking on the door consistently against Alex Albon in qualifying in race pace. But it was just so rare, the upside wasn't there for Williams to, to keep him. Mick Schumacher, another example as well. I mean, James Val has had some pretty savage quote, basically being he's not special enough. And, Unfortunately, the evidence we have presented in front of us, certainly from him in F1 and 
things we've heard about him in the simulator, etc., just indicate exactly that. He's not a driver worth taking the punt on because the, the risk factor outweighs the potential upside. I put a little poll out on the YouTube community page to so make sure you like this video and are subscribed to the YouTube channel so you don't miss them in the future. How does Kimi Antonelli's FP1 crash impact your feeling around his current circumstance? A bad sign, it's too soon for the kid. A neutral sign, eh, it happens at Parabolica. Or a good sign, he's prepared to go full send. 19% of you think bad, 75% neutral, 7% Good as per we got some comments here as well Eleanor 6573 neutral the crash doesn't change but I'm a bit worried for Kimi he's being rushed through junior categories with way too much external pressure from the media pressure is going to exist when you're a young starlet like Andrea Kimi Antonelli his record speaks for itself look at his Wikipedia yourself it is very very incredibly impressive even this year in f2 to be honest given the struggles at prima given how much he's been able to outscore ollie behrman you know his teammate who's, who's proven what he can do in a ferrari formula one car around saudi arabia i think actually kimmy's had a very very good f2 season for a rookie in a team that is not on top of this car at prima like high tech are with theirs or campos are with theirs. I absolutely understand the sentiment that Toto's put too much pressure on Kimi at this stage. If they want to get Kimi in this car, there's no way that that doesn't bring a lot of pressure. And you've got to think, was it worth passing up the opportunity of Carlos Sainz alongside George Russell for a year? You know, give Carlos Sainz one year. I think Carlos would have taken one year at Mercedes over the deal he's taken at Williams because he would have felt like I can come in and dislodge George Russell and then George can shoot off and it can be me and Kimi long term. There is a lot of credence to that and I don't think Toto was at risk of losing Andrea Kimi Antonelli but perhaps I'm being naive. Grid Talk UK, plenty of senior drivers have had that exact crash at Parabolica and we saw drivers in FP1 come close to losing it today. Nothing too concerning in the long run, not ideal. Kimi, George and Mercedes as there's loss of track time and a chance to properly review Kimi in the F1 car but he's back in Mexico, Mexico. I'm sure he'll bounce back and that bounce back ability is absolutely key right because again Max Verstappen was known for crashes at the start of career Charles Leclerc still has that reputation amongst many people okay you can be great and also be a bit crashy and this is going to be a big learning curve for Andrea Kimi Antonelli as I speak he'll be getting prepared for Formula 2 qualifying he needs to bounce back and learn from this because you learn most in life from your mistakes and certainly he made a mistake he shunted the car with the finally they put the new floor on his car and left lewis with the old one to try and get a comparison and it only lasted 12 laps but i guess they must have got some data from the first you know three quarters of the lap before he crashed alice made a very good point actually i remember max's comments on entering f1 at this young age he said you're going to want to find your limits and in doing so you will make a lot of mistakes you have to make those in order to have a better understanding of yourself and the car the key is not to dwell on it too long and just carry on max is a driver who's well known for being someone who just goes full send straight away and that approach when he was younger and less experienced did result in these incidents but he gets away with it now because he's that good he's that adept he's that experienced now that he can do that which again i think is quite rare when i've spoken to shout out blake um break f1 you know used to be max's performance engineer it was like nothing he'd seen before when max would be able to jump in and just he would just go ham straight away he wouldn't build up to it many drivers most drivers build up to it there's not one way of doing things and i think the fact that kimmy went full send straight away i'm sure mercedes giving him they're the ones who gave him the soft tires at the end of the day right and would have encouraged him to to push and set some headline times in monza because this isn't just doing an fp1 for the sake of some obligation that the fia impose on the teams this is them doing fp1 in a driver that they want to be in their car next season like there is no shred of doubt that that is the intent and that is still absolutely going to happen. And you have to accept that these crashes, these incidents are part of the process, part of the learning process to get Andrea Kimi Antonelli to where he needs to be. Even you could argue that him doing this now will actually value and benefit him more in the long term because he's been stung now. This F1 car stunned him and it stunned him in the most public facing way possible. Yeah, if he can bounce back and recover from this, that is the sign of a future world champion. It's way too early to say that, of course, he's only just turned 18 years of age. But 
That's what Mercedes think he could be. Let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. My name's Tomo. Thanks again. Have a good one. Ta-da.